Hey, I'm Trey Nelms, Nashville Fire 3 Truck. We're gonna talk a little bit today about forcible entry. I know there are several different aspects involved. If you're gonna do conventional, through the lock, or use power tools, but today we're gonna to look at something more scenario based. Uh, we're at a commercial building today, which is a restaurant. Uh, we're gonna talk about some forcible entry options for this door that you see behind us. One of the first things we're going to, have to do is we're going to have to size up this door. Several members, a lot of times if we pull up to an occupancy like this, uh, especially with heavy fire and smoke showing, is we'll just take this glass. Uh, if the hose team isn't ready, if we have a pump problem, water pressure issue or whatever, we've lost the door. The fire is coming this way, there's no doubt about that. And we don't have a barrier for our safety or to stop the fire progress. So we need to look at some other things that we can do to maybe change that up. If we, as we size it up, we see we got a metal door, metal frame, large pane of glass here. Uh, the only lock that we really see is this one lock here. And there's a couple of different options that we can do for that. Uh, here's something else that I want to point out. Let's say that people do take this glass out. We choose not to go through the door. What about this center bar here? There's been a lot of occasions where that catches a firefighter when they're trying to make an emergency escape or if they're just trying to stretch in or do a search. If you do elect to take this glass out, you definitely need to make sure that this bar is taken out and out of the way for firefighter safety. Now that you've sized up the door, we got our thought process going. We gotta think, what tools do I need to make access to this building? What things are on my piece of equipment that I can use to make access here? The first thing that most people think of is our handy dandy irons. Everybody in the fire service knows about these things, but I would recommend maybe using a sledgehammer as opposed to an ax for a commercial building. It's gonna give you a little bit more weight with your swings and with commercial construction, it's gonna be a little bit stouter anyway, so consider the sledge. There are several different things that you could carry in your pocket. All this stuff goes in one turnout pocket of mine. You see I have vice grips, a variety of screwdrivers, a key tool, and pliers. You could use these to manipulate a lot of different locks. From here, since we're going to go through the lock, possibly, we might consider the K-tool. You see the K-shape on the back that has the blades that are actually going to bite into that cylinder and assist us with pulling it from the door. Of course, you would just slide your halligan in there and pry up or down whichever one uh, was appropriate for that situation to pull the lock out and get you access. As you can see, we've got the K2 in place, got the halligan ready to pry down or up, whichever the case may be, that's going to pull the lock cylinder out. Then we would get in with our screwdriver or key tool to manipulate the locking mechanism to gain access. Of course, if we got a work and fire situation here, we would make sure that we had full PPE, including SCBA and a charged hose line ready to go. Now we're gonna give you the option of making access by spinning the lock out with vice grips. First, you'll get a good, uh, good bite on the lock all you should have to do is just give it a quick spin. There's just a couple of set screws in there that you're going to break the head off of. Then it'll thread right out. Then we can get in with our different tools and manipulate the lock and gain access. A pretty quick operation, one that people don't think about a lot, especially if a good working incident. If you see the two notches on each side, that's where the set screws go that hold this lock in place. As you can see, it's also threaded, so if you had alarm activation or something like that, you could pull this thing out, get in there, manipulate the latch, lock it back up, screw it in, and you should be good to go, at least to secure it to the next morning when the occupants get there. We've got the lock cylinder out, so from here, uh, we see it's at the five o'clock position. We'll take our key tool, go inside, manipulate the lock, and just take it right over to seven o'clock. 
And just like that, we're in.